Hi folks, StylePoint here, and today we're going to be implementing the Rectified Linear Unit, aka the ReLU activation function. We're going to be implementing it in Python using PyTorch. But before we jump into the uh, implementation bit, let us first discuss ReLU and you know what it represents, uh, what are some of its features, and how do these features set it apart from other activation functions. In this video, I want to compare ReLU to the uh, sigmoid activation function because I think that's actually a good activation function uh, for uh, drawing a comparison. Now, uh, we have the ReLU activation function here, right here. We have the plot for it. And on the uh, separate workspace, I have the sigmoid activation function. So we can alternate between these two, uh, two plots here. Um, OK, we start with ReLU. So this is how ReLU looks like. It's like two lines merged or joined at this point zero. This is the equation. I put it as a legend. Um, so ReLU of x is a max of 0 and x. This means that any negative input is going to be mapped to zero that we can see here from the plot as well. And any non-negative input is going to be mapped onto itself. There we have it. Um, now, um, I love this activation function. There are many reasons why. Um, one of the reasons, of course, being that uh, uh, it introduces nonlinearity. But I mean, every activation function pretty much does that. Uh, that is not something that separates it from other activation functions. So to better understand uh, why ReLU is so awesome, uh, we're going to start by uh, comparing it to sigmoid. OK, this is sigmoid, and it has two, uh, two implementations. They're equivalent, 1 over 1 plus e to the power of minus x, and e to the power of x over 1 plus e to the power of x. The first thing that we notice here, if we compare this to ReLU, is that it's very complicated. I mean, we have to do division, addition. We have to like do exponentiation. We have to like raise uh, e to the minus x power. Uh, even in a second implementation, we have to compute e to the power of x. And then, OK, we might pre-compute it so that we use, we use it in two places so that we don't have to compute it twice. But still, we have to do exponentiation, division, addition. And so very complicated. With ReLU, we don't have to do that much work. Uh, all we do is that we take the input, compare it to 0. If it's less than 0, we map it to 0. If it's not less than 0, we map it onto itself. Done. OK, so this, basically, this kind of uh, simplicity of ReLU allows it to be very fast. So ReLU is a very fast activa activation function, and that I really love. Uh, sigmoid is not as fast. Additional benefit of uh, uh, ReLU is that it it, it does not really result in numerical stability issues because we don't do exponentiation. We don't, we don't do e to the power of minus x. We don't need to have these two representations to properly implement it. Uh, and so uh, an additional benefit uh, that, that comes from this simplicity is that it's, it doesn't have a lot of issues um, with like numerical stability and overflows and underflows and so forth. Um, another thing about ReLU is that uh, it allows neuron to express a strong opinion, and this I'm actually uh, I'm actually quoting uh, um, Jeffrey Hinton. Um, this is what he said. Uh, what that means is that uh, if we look at sigmoid to explain what that means, um, the the plot of sigmoid it kind of looks like it's like split into like three parts. We have this upper tail, we have this middle, uh, well we have this middle part, and then we have this lower tail. So like low, middle, and like whatever high. And so, of course, uh, sigmoid is really nice because it, it, it puts, it maps input onto a 0, 1 open, uh, open interval or 0, zero 1 interval, but uh, it, it limits the expressiveness of a neuron, right? This is different from the, uh, uh, um, uh, the ReLU where we actually don't limit uh, the neuron as much. Uh, the expressiveness is not limited. Uh, of course, for the negative inputs, uh, those inputs, they're going to be suppressed. They're going to be mapped to zero. But for positive inputs, for non-negative inputs, uh, we have we, ha we have a lot more expressiveness here, right? This allows neuron to express itself because unique inputs are going to be mapped to uh, unique outputs. So that's basically what what uh, what we mean by expressiveness, uh, right? It means that we don't really need to be uh, you know, put onto the one of these like three regions here, like upper region, middle region, or low region, and uh, th that's like what sigmoid does. As, as we said already, uh, that's that's like uh, the feature of sigmoid. It's it's kind of like unfortunate, but that's what's uh, what what is also like a power of sigmoid. It maps input onto a zero one uh, uh, interval. Um, so as a result, sigmoid can pretty much answer questions like you know yes, no, and like maybe. <laughs> 
Okay, and uh, in the ARELU activation function, because of that feature that for non-negative inputs, uh, unique inputs are going to be mapped uh, uh, to a unique outputs, that basically uh, strengthens the expressiveness, or it allows neuron to express it itself better. Okay, um, but uh, as you already noticed from the equation and the plot itself, there is this uh, you know a problem of um, you know zeroing out. Uh, uh, input values if they're negative and there are other activation functions that try to uh, alleviate this kind of like a problem but we're going to see that it's actually not a not a huge huge problem when we're going to be uh, implementing some ml models so uh, the final final feature of relu just like any activation function it also introduces nonlinearity and that's super cool if we didn't have nonlinearity we would not be able to approximate nonlinear functions okay all we would be able to do is just fit lines so ReLU is great for that as well. Okay, so now that we know what is ReLU, how it compares to the uh, uh, to the sigmoid activation function, and we know some of its features and why I love it, because well, it's fast. It introduces nonlinearity. It doesn't have numerical stability issues. Super simple to implement, you know, and uh, uh, also allows a, a neuron to express itself. Now we're going to jump into uh, into the uh, uh, into the implementation part. Okay, let's go ahead and implement the ReLU activation function now. We're going to have two different implementations. Well, they're not going to be completely different, but they're different enough that having both of them, I think, is going to be both informative and helpful. But before implementing ReLU, actually, let us first compute the uh, gradient or derivative for the uh, ReLU. So ReLU of x is max of 0 and x. And we can write, like, rules for this, like the function itself. We can represent this function as, uh, as like, two rules. If x is less than 0, well, then we get 0. If x is greater than or equal to 0, then we get x. That's for the function. For the gradient, kind of similar. If x is less than 0, well, that's going to be like a constant number, 0. And uh, in this case, that's derivative of that is going to be 0. So this is fine. For this one, if x is greater than or equal to 0, we get x. Derivative of x is 1. But there is one subtle kind of like an issue in a way. Uh, that we need to handle here. In particular, um, the uh, derivative of ReLU at x equals 0 is actually undefined. The reason for that is because at x equals 0, the left and right derivatives, they're not the same. Um, and so by convention, we're going to say that uh, der derivative of ReLU at x equals 0 is also 0. Okay. There, are not, there are not a lot of like strong reasons why that is the case, but one of the reasons could be that we might need, uh, we might want to have uh, um, sparser tensors, and to do that, we need more zeros, pretty much. So that could be like one justification we can we can come up for this, you know, convention. Um, but now, now that we know how to do both the uh, how to implement both the ReLU and and uh, and the gradient of ReLU, let's go ahead and implement uh, this class, pretty much. Let's fill in the uh, fill in the blank here. So for the forward method. We need to return torch.where. This is the ternary if operation, pretty much. So let's just follow what we have here. If x is less than 0, that's 0. So if data is less than 0, that's going to be 0. Otherwise, it's x. x is pretty much data in this case. So we pretty much follow what we have here. If data is less than 0, that's 0. If uh, in any other case, it's x. It's data. OK, done. So forward is done. Now for the backward method, for the back propagation, we still need the data so we can save it. There is the save for backward uh, uh, method defined on this context. Uh, um, that allows us to save data uh, in the forward method so that we can reuse it in the, uh, backward, uh, in the backward method for the back propagation. Now that we saved data, we can unpack that by saying saved tensors. And we can compute the gradient by following the rules right here. And for that, we can say torch.where, again, the uh, ternary if operation, if, again, x is data here, if data is uh, less than or equal to 0, we're going to get 0, otherwise we're going to get 1. Finally, we do the uh, chain rule, and we multiply the uh, grad, uh, grad output by the grad. So grad output is the gradient up until this point, and we multiply it by the gradient that we get here. So that's it. That's the entire implementation of the uh, ReLU activation function. And for the testing, we have the grad check. What grad check does is that it compares the uh, 
our gradient approximations with the numerical approximations. And if the difference is not too large, we're going to say that the uh, grad check is successful. Otherwise, we're going to say it's unsuccessful, and then we might need to look into the uh, code again. But let's run this. And there it is, grad check successful. So that's cool. Uh, this is like one implementation. Okay, as promised, I'm going to show you the uh, alternative implementation as well. Now, I've written this beforehand so that we don't have to write it, but there's not much to write. Uh, the alternative implementation is actually the implementation I would I would actually have. This is the one, uh, this is the approach I would actually take uh, for implementing ReLU. Um, well, actually, I would never probably implement it myself because it's supported. But if it was not supported, th this would probably be the approach I would take. Uh, so what do we do here? We import torch, just like here, we import torch. And we also import torch.nn as nn so that we can then uh, uh, inherit from nn.module. Then we have this initializer where we init, we, we do inheritance pretty much, and we only have the forward method. You see there is no uh, backward, and there is also no context passed to uh, the forward method. There is no context save for backward as well, because again, we don't pass it. And the reason we don't need all that stuff is because um, torch.where, it's actually the operation that uh, for which PyTorch knows how to compute uh, the uh, gradient. So for a lot of these built-in operations, PyTorch can automatically do backpropagation. So we don't really need to write backward method manually. Uh, the reason I included this, you know, both forward and backward kind of an approach where we do everything manually is because uh, there are cases where we need to, where we may need to implement something, some activation function that is not supported by PyTorch and where we need to use some operations uh, uh, that are also not supported by PyTorch. So let's suppose there is some activation function instead of ReLU, we call it uh, ReLU plus or something like that. And uh, it's not supported by PyTorch and its implementation requires some of the tools, some of the maybe functions, operations, that are also not supported by PyTorch, meaning that um, it cannot automatically do the uh, uh, do the uh, gradient computation. It cannot do automatic differentiation. So in that case, we need to be able to implement both forward and backward and have this like API for that function. So I thought it would be informative uh, and you know helpful to have this uh, this implementation in the video as well. But this implementation right here to test that as well that it's, it pretty much works. We can change this to ReLU like that. And there it is, scratch X successful. So um, the API changes a bit. Um, we do ReLU.apply when we inherit from torch.autograd.function. Uh, but if we do this nn.module approach, then we need the class itself. So that's going to be it for this video. We implemented the uh, ReLU activation function in you know in two different ways we also talked about uh, what are some of like benefits of using ReLU what are some of its features we compared it to sigmoid and so uh, yeah I hope you found this um, helpful uh, thanks for tuning in and I'm gonna see you next time